morning. Let us begin our worship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be Jesus Christ be with us. A couple of announcements first. Uh, they sound like a broken record. Uh, Mary Mask is mandatory to bring in the chapel or throughout the church.
In this very special Sunday, we are taking the time to uh, continue to share words that speak to us in the midst of all that we've been going through. And uh, this morning, our, uh, our scripture lesson comes to us from uh, the Gospel of Matthew. I want to share those words with you this morning. I have to put on my glasses to see it this morning. It's, uh, I usually print this out in bigger type, and uh, this morning I'm just going to use my glasses and read from this, and hopefully this will go well. If not, we'll be back to the bigger type next time. <laughs> Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. And shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord of the Jew, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come. Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to seek, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You, you of a little faith, why? Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. These are God's words for us this morning. His words of good news to us, that speak to us in the midst of our lives. It's possible through God in prayer. God, we come this morning and we come anticipating that your word is going to speak to our hearts right now. That your word has something to say about who we are and where we are in our lives. That your word is going to become new to us in such a way that it moves our hearts and lives closer to you. This we pray to ask, O oh God, in your name. Amen. This is a simple story, really. We, we know this, that Jesus has finished feeding the 5,000, and uh, as he has done that, uh, with the miracle of a few loaves and a few fishes, the report is that it's a miracle that that could happen. And, you know, the Bible even says something that I'm not excited about, that there were leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> but then, Jesus, kind of hearing the crowd, he, he wants the disciples to move away. And he wants to be able to uh, dismiss the crowd himself. Doesn't really give a reason for that, but he does. Um, and so he does do that. And then uh, he recognizes that the disciples are out in the boat quite a distance away. And so uh, Jesus begins to walk on the water over. And there, the disciples happen to see him 
and they are absolutely terrified. Now, remember, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, first of all, okay? And also, they've been fighting this storm that they've been in for most all of the evening. And so when they see Jesus, they're afraid. And in the midst of that, Jesus speaks to them and he says, fear not. I want us to talk a little bit this morning about how this story speaks to us. We're 18 months in now with this COVID thing. And we thought at some point we were done with this, didn't we? And we began to, to feel a sense maybe of freedom again. And, and now all of a sudden we're back. We're all wearing masks and we're all a little bit uncomfortable about being around a lot of people. And, and all of those things are coming back. And, and those same issues that were at the very beginning that created fear and panic about this pandemic are suddenly back again. And it becomes for all of us this issue about fear and faith. And, and what are we going to do to allow faith to have the final word and to not let fear creep into who we are and what we're about? I'll show you. Uh, Kind of my show and tell for the day here. This is uh, this is my dad's boat. Uh, this was his work boat. Uh, let's see. I'll put it down here. And uh, it's a it's a wonderful, actually, replica of, uh, of dad's boat, and uh, it's. Uh, Something that was meaningful for me, uh, kind of all through my life. Uh, Dad uh, had had the boat uh, built in Deltaville, actually, uh, by a boat builder there. And then uh, he did uh, a lot of work uh, on the cabin and inside the cabin uh, and some other parts of it. Um, I bring that to, to tell you uh, an important story. Um, that happened quite a long time ago when I was a, a small, me and my sister, uh, both of us. And uh, it's a story about being out on the water in the midst of, uh, of a storm coming up. We were out in, in the bay, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, this uh, storm came up, and the waves began to kind of press over the, the, the sides of the boat. And me and my sister had kind of gone back into where uh, the, uh, the cabin is, and the door was open, and we were kind of looking back at our father who was over here, and he was uh, kind of steering the boat here with the rudder. And um, so as he was doing that, we were looking back at him, and we were pretty scared. Uh, the boat was going kind of up and down and up and down. And I, I, I was so nervous that I started to eat. <laughs> we had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And uh, so I started eating. And, and just about that time when I took a great big bite, this wave crashed over and my whole sandwich got soaking wet. <laughs> And I'm guessing to this very day, I don't like wet, soggy sandwiches. <laughs> uh, maybe had something to do with the story. Uh, anyway, as that was happening, uh, the boat going up and down, and uh, my sister and I were both pretty scared. And uh, we kind of settled back into the cabin, and uh, uh, we were looking out, out back at our dad, who had on some oil slicks, and trying to guide the boat through the storm. Um, and I knew this. If anybody knew those waters, and if anybody could steer us through those waters, it would be my dad. My dad was an awesome uh, captain of his own boat, but, but knew those waters very, very well, and knew what the boat would do, and uh, knew the dangers that were involved. 
And I could hear my, my father, uh, as we were looking back at him, he could see and tell that we were very much afraid. And his words to us were this, it's all right, it's okay. And I knew, I just knew that it was going to be all right, that it was going to be okay, because my dad was going to take care of things there. You see, fear comes when we don't have confidence. Fear comes when, when we don't trust. Fear is that thing that, that oftentimes is very difficult for all of us. And it was certainly true for the disciples as they were going through this experience these moments of the storm. These were hardened, long-term fishermen. They knew about storms, and yet they were afraid. So in the midst of fear, what do we do? How do we not let fear have the last word? How do, how do we deal with those kinds of things. Was really watching a movie uh, based on a book by a uh, it, it was uh, written, it was, the movie came out in the 1960s. It was called The Dark at the Top of the Stairs. And, and it was really a book about um, life. I, I mean, The Dark at the Top of the Stairs. Doesn't that sound kind of like an Alfred Hitchcock movie, like The 39 Steps or something like that? that's kind of <laughs> spooky scary. Uh, but it was really about ordinary life in 1920s Oklahoma <clears throat> and about this family that was, was absolutely falling apart at the seams. And you see, life is like that for all of us. Fear does that. It, it makes us seem like life is falling apart at the seams. And into the midst of all of those kind of things that maybe others have experienced, maybe you've experienced them too. And maybe during this time of COVID, you've had those kind of feelings as well. That things seem to be coming apart. And into the midst of all of that, we hear Jesus saying these words, Fear not. Fear not, it is I. And so, there's a question here. Not just about fear and faith. There's something else going on, too, in this story. And what's going on in this story is this. For us to deal with the fears of our lives. You know, we've talked a good bit in the last couple of weeks about monsters and moving mountains. And in the midst of all of those things, we've talked about this too. About finding a faith that takes us deeper. Finding a faith and enables us to deal with all the monsters and the mountains and all of the waves and the wind that come at us in our lives. So it means this for us as God's people this morning. It means doing what Peter did. It means getting out of the boat. For you see, here's what was happening. Jesus says these words. Don't be afraid. It's me. And the other disciples just sit there. But Peter, all the way through, Peter jumps out and he goes, Well, God, Jesus, if it's you, tell me to come to you and I will. 
simply says, come. And Jesus is always telling us that. Never to stay, always come. To keep our eyes focused on Him. Even in the midst of the fears that would keep us in the boat, Jesus is always telling us, come. Come. And so Peter does. Peter gets out of the boat. And you know what? The most incredible thing happens. Jesus tells Peter to come. And Peter steps out in faith. And he does something that's absolutely impossible. He walks on water. And the miracle of that is not that he walks on water. The miracle of that is in those moments of his faith in So this morning, as we think about this passage, how do we take a deeper dive? How do we, as God's people, move from believing in Jesus to trusting in Jesus? See the difference? How do we move from Conviction to commitment. That's what Peter manages to help us understand. It's risky to get out of the boat. The water is scary. There's high winds and waves and all kinds of manner of things. And we walk into the things, if we walk to the things that we're afraid of, it's going to be scary. Yeah. But here's the truth. The truth is, fear not. It is I, says Jesus. This is Labor Day weekend. I, I kind of saw in all of the uh, advertisements, of course, this is big furniture time, sales, and all sorts of things. You know the, the most favorite uh, lounging chair in America? You know what it's called? Lazy Boy. <laughs> Lazy Boy. Not risky boy or worker boy. Lazy boy. Sometimes we get that way in our faith lives, don't we? It's easier to stay in the boat. We don't have to risk the things that might happen if we step out. It's easier to just be afraid and not to really trust Jesus in the midst of the things that we're fearful about because at some point we may fall victim to the fear that is ever present because the wind and the waves are there. We're walking right in, into them and on top of them. They're there. And so talking about Trusting and committing to that, it's not easy. And there are moments when we can, in our faith, lies fail. But here's the good news. Just as Jesus is there with Peter offering his hand and holding him up, When the bottom falls out for us, <clears throat> Jesus is there to hold us up as well. Isaiah 26 says it this way. 
the God will keep us in perfect peace. Then our minds are stayed on Him. When we can keep our hearts, our minds, our eyes on Jesus, no matter the storm, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. I told you that story about me and my sister long, long ago. We always called it the storm story. And uh, from time to time as we were growing up, we shared that back and forth about the experience. Um, my sister, um, it's over six years ago now, um, died of early onset dementia. She was still in her 50s. Um, she was diagnosed uh, and then nine months later she had passed away. But it was when she was over at Commonwealth and, and I had them actually to be feeding her. And uh, she kept saying this phrase over and over when I would come and visit with her. And, and the phrase was this, it's all right, it's okay. And I couldn't figure it out for a moment until I thought back to the storm story. And suddenly it occurred to me that, that maybe God, I don't know how the brain works, but I know this. I think God does. And somehow maybe he had spoken to her that in the midst of all of this, he had given her that blessed assurance, it's going to be okay. It's all right. Just like our earthly father, her heavenly father had. And then, and then later I began to think as well, though, that there's another part of that. Maybe, maybe that word from her was for me, that, that I was going to be okay, that, that she was all right, and that you know, she was in God's hands, and I, I should just have faith in that. And I was never really sure if it was one of those or both of those or, or what it was, but I did know this, that somehow... God was wrapped up into the midst of all of that. <clears throat> that. That God was present in the midst of those fears that I had. And you see, it's true for each one of us that God is there, ready to give us that perfect peace that faith brings when we trust Him. Not sure of all that you're experiencing during this time of COVID, but I know this: that God is still speaking, speaking to each one of us, and He's calling us to go deeper. I look around and I see, yeah, we're all getting older. And it's true, we are. But it doesn't mean that we can't go deeper in our faith lives. It doesn't mean that we can't really begin to understand what it means to get out of the boat, to not allow fears to have those effects on our lives, to instead let faith have the final word in our lives to somehow find and discover that faith leads us to that perfect peace that God wants for each of us in our lives. This morning, that's all possible for each one of us. But we have to get out of the boat to walk on the water. Let's bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> monsters and mountains and wind and water, 
all of the things that seem to get in our way sometimes. And yet, faith beckons us to come, to hear your words, to know you. And so, oh God, we make the commitment now to come, to get out of the boat, to do what faith calls us to do.
This morning we continue in our time of worship. It is indeed a blessing to be able to be together as God's family. And uh, we, we understand that blessing richly. Uh, that we are not alone. That God is with us. But that we have the resource of one another as well. Uh, as God's family. And as our church family here. To lean upon. And so it is a wonderful thing that we can be together as God's family. We also have the privilege of being able to, to share our commitment with one another and to God by the opportunities that our offering provide for us. They are our opportunity to show that our faith is a real faith and not just a talking faith. So for that opportunity, we thank you for displaying your faithfulness to God and to the rest of the family here uh, by your tithes and offerings. As well, for all of those who are listening online, again, we say thank you as well for your participation and for your presence in a virtual way in being with us uh, as God's family. We uh, take the time this morning to uh, remember that uh, in the world in which we live right now, there are many things happening. And God has called us to be a people who are to be a people of prayer, uh, who seek God uh, concerning the things that uh, show us concern. So let's pause this morning as we bow together in these moments of prayer. <clears throat> I hope, Father, we come this morning. And during this holiday weekend, God, we are aware of the blessings and the bounty that is ours as people in this country. We are aware, oh God, that there are others all around the world who are dealing with circumstances and situations that are tragic and scary for all of those in, in Haiti who are still recuperating and who are still dealing with <clears throat> such tremendous losses due to the earthquake there. We pray and lift them up to you, O oh God. For those in Afghanistan who are troubled and fearful in these moments of change and <clears throat> difficulty. We, we lift them to you, O oh God. We just pray that they would have a sense of peace and calm. Dear God, for all of those who are gathered at our borders and are still struggling in those capacities, we lift them to you as well. All over the world, we're dealing with issues of fear and change. But we know this, so God, that it's still true. Even when we don't have eyes to see it, we know this. That you have the whole world in your hands. That we believe, oh God. And we pray for faith. you call each of us to be peacemakers. That we could find your blessing as we enact that role of bringing peace. 
not just some foreign land of God, but maybe in a gift that we give, or a word that we say, or a thought that we have, or an action that we take that leads to peace. God, help us be mindful that you have created the whole world as our family. And that our brothers and sisters all over the world need us to reach out and to hold their hands as they reach out to hold of us. Dear God, we, we come this morning as well and, and we know that there are many around us who are sick and need your healing touch. And with faith, we pray that as well, oh God. There are still others who are, are dealing with loss change in their lives, oh God, and, and we pray for them too, that you will be with them in the midst of taking those steps they need to take in their lives. Father, for all of us, as we go, these twin balls of faith and fear during this season of Be with us. Help us to go deeper. Help us to dive in to really knowing what faith is about. And be with us especially, God, as, as we pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Dear God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the wind and the water. We thank you for the mountains. We thank you, O oh God, that you are present here, that your word is so alive to us. Most of all, O oh God, we thank you for your love, for the height and the depth, the length and the width, of your love toward us. And our prayer is this, O oh God, that our roots would grow down deep into the soil of your 